possibility which emphasises the upturn in form of Rob Pitt's side in recent weeks. And talking of the Palace manager, here is the team that he's named today. Five changes from the side last time out, which beat Norwich 4-2. So the lineup in the form, Billy Eastwood is in goal, George King, Dean Benamar, Charlie Walker-Smith, Sean Samadhi, Fyrus is in in midfield, Jasper Chun, Seb Williams, Benji Casey, Mateo Gashi and Jesse Derry. On the substitute bench, they have Kyrie Adams Coleman, Marcus Hill, the substitute goalkeeper, Zach Henry, recently back from injury, Jerome Asai, and Joshua Wano. As for Fulham, they made two changes to the team that drew 2 2 at home to Reading last time out. Marco Underwood replacing Dono Kaiser in goal, and Joe Walters is into the team in the back line as well, with Bradley Slade missing for the visitors. So the Cottagers team then, Marco Underwood is the goalkeeper. Joe Walters, Logan Cook, Eddie Insasi and Luca Picotto across the back line with Captain Jaden Quashi and Seth Rigian in midfield. And then a forward three of Macaulay Zaper, Fahan Ali Wahid and Aidan Evans behind Bashil Lebega. On the bench today, Dano Kaiser, Alfie White, Ruben Khan and Harley Platel. They'll be looking to continue this season in this rich vein of form today. The referee just making sure that all's in order. We are just about ready to get this one off and underway. Then the referee blows his whistle. It's Fulham who get the ball rolling as they attack the goal to the left of the picture in this first half. Expected to be a back four today then for Palace. Sometimes we've seen them line up with a three at the back system with the wing backs, but it's expected to be a, a more regular four at the back today with King on the right, Walker Smith and Samade in the middle and Benamar into the team on the left. Fulham in possession at the moment with Joe Walters. One of the two changes for them. Here's Ali Wahid. Only possession for the visitors. Rigian in the heart of midfield. Now Sarsi. Now Fahan Ali Wahid again. been a mixed bag of results for Fulham coming into this game as I mentioned they drew 2-2 at home to Reading last time out they were on the, the right side of a 5-1 scoreline prior to that before that they lost 5-1 the exact same scoreline before so very much a mixed bag of results for them coming into this game which perhaps highlights the unpredictability in the away team today there's a man down here early on for Palace just getting back to his feet there, Jasper Judd. Moving somewhat gingerly though, as he's back to his feet. Into the team today. To replace Tyler White, who misses out after Judd came off the bench to score last week. But so dangerous, so lively every time he got the ball on the right wing, which is the role which he's occupying in the team today as well. Palace with the ball at the moment. Nice switch of play here. Out to find Judd. Matteo Dashi under pressure from behind though. Keeps the ball in play. And Judd goes back to King. Palace recycle and retain possession. Benamar. Another one of those into the team today for Palace. One of the five changes. There's no Freddie Cowan. The regular left back involved today. He'll be a miss. Top of the assist charts with four assists already this season, but he misses out today. That's just the wrong side of the white line over on the far side, so it's out for the game's first throw in, which is here for Fulham. It's 
throw and taken forward there. Down the line and up to Bashil Lebega, leading the line today for the visitors. The presence up front, isn't he? The number nine, which Walker Smith and Samade will have to contend with throughout the 90 minutes. Palace captain there, Seb Williams, on the ball in midfield. Alongside the trialist into the team. His midfield partner today, Judd to Dashi and back to Jasper Judd again. Neat skill, but he then saw it towed away from him. Better response this though from Palace after the first couple of minutes. Still very early stages, of course, but Palace now settling down into the game and looking to assert their control. Well, it's taken there by Ben Amar back to Samade. Judd. Quickly pressurised then though by Luca Picotto. The Welsh left back for Fulham. It will be Picotto here to take the resultant throw in. Cotter just assessing his options, throws it short in the end into the feet of Quashi, but he only had it momentarily. The foul there on Benjamin Casey. Got off the mark last week in the league, the Palace number nine. Scored a, a header from a corner. Oh, Palace on their way in that comeback victory from behind against Norwich. Nice switch of play there by Dashi. Benamar now looking to change the angle and maybe deliver into the centre. But it took a challenge then from Joe Walters. The last touch there coming back off Dean Benamar as well. So it's a Fulham throw. Switch of play there for Fulham and forward towards Ali Wehi. Couldn't bring the ball under his spell though. Now Jasper Judd has it for Palace. The offer of a 1v1 slips the pass through instead to Dashi across the face of the penalty area. And is that going to break too? It's cleared in the end and a first involvement for Marco Underwood in the Fulham goal to palm that cross away. The counter attack here kick started for Fulham as well. And leading the charge is Ridgian. The Bega forced wide to get on the ball, but has it back here from Ali Wahid. Palace now with bodies back behind the ball, and they're set up again defensively once more. And Sarsi. Now Ali Wahid, who's seen a lot of the ball early on. Back to Insasi again. Seven minutes on the clock. Still Palace nil, Fulham nil. No real opportunities on goal for either team as yet. A relatively even start as the offside flag there is raised by the referee's assistant over on the far side. It's a free kick which has been taken quickly for Palace to get the ball back in play. Clipped forward there down the channel for Casey to get on his bike after and he was fouled. Too much contact in the back. Eddie and Sarsi, the offender there for Fulham. The opportunity then here for Palace to load the penalty area. And we'll see what they've got by way of a delivery in from this set piece. Matteo Dashi looks likely to take. Also have the left-footed option there of Dean Benamar as well, who's made his way across from left to right. 
And it is Benamar who delivers in the end. Ali Wahid with the header out for the corner. Mentioned that Palace scored from a corner last week. Cohen's delivery headed home off the post by Benji Casey. We'll see what they have up their sleeve here from their first corner of the game this morning. It's taken short. Delivered again with that left foot. Header out of the penalty area and Zipa helped it on its way out as well. Well, and again clearing up to halfway but nothing more than that and it's uh, back in possession with the Palace goalkeeper Billy Eastwood actually uh, an overage goalkeeper permitted to play today Billy Eastwood between the sticks for Palace he replaces Marcus Hill who drops down to the substitutes bench a little bit fortunate, but Benamar oh, able to oh, bring the ball under his control. Now Casey in towards Dashi, back towards Benamar again. Good work then, though, from Seth Ridgian for Fulham in midfield. He wants to begin with, he's then giving the ball away. Now Dashi. Derry. Oh, inadvertently fired that one against his own teammate, and it struck Dashi in the head. And Judd. Not quite on the same page there as his number 10 teammate Dashi. And it runs all the way through for the goal kick. Ten minutes on the clock. Jesse Derry with his first involvement there. The man who's been on red hot form so far this season. Seven goals in all competitions so far this campaign. Six in the league puts him joint at the top of the goal scoring charts across all of the under 18 Premier League both north and south taking aim there but it's comfortable for Marco Underwood Just bounced through to the full goalkeeper he was able to hold on to it the pressure from Judd to force the error it's a misplaced pass from Picotto Benamar, Williams trying to switch the play in search of Judd who found a pocket of space there but the switch was cut out, Williams wins it back, driving forwards through midfield, referee's blown the whistle for the Fulham free kick though and it's a moment's respite in defence for the Cottagers. Good start from Palace. I think that Rob Quinn will be content with the opening what? Nearly 12 minutes now. Richie and linking the play there out to Walters. Ali Wahid, the outlet again for Fulham. Picotto. Put into touch by the covering defender Charlie Walker Smith. <laughs> Ali Wahid fouled there by Matteo Dashi. No Enrique Lameras today for Palace. He was forced off with injury in the first half last week. Zach Henry came on for him. He's back on the substitute bench. Having returned from a, a long-term injury last time out. So you'd imagine that Palace are just monitoring his minutes and phasing him back into things. They're taken short by King. So Palace will build a game. King 
King into the feet of Dashi and slipping it through and behind the full and back line. But Underwood was alert, quickly out of his penalty area to sweep up any potential danger. So two there at the other end, Walker Smith as he helps it back to Eastwood. Fulham now hiring their line of engagement and pressing higher up the field. Heavy touch there from the trialist in midfield, which is well to win it back. Good again under intense pressure from Luca Picotto, who started this game well on the near side for Fulham. Again, it was he who won the ball back, and Fulham still have possession. And he, nice one two to get it back there off Picotto, then feeds it back to the left back. He wins the corner off George King. Palace then with some defending to do from this set piece. Fulham with the opportunity to send some of the big men forwards from the back. Offering as a, a short option from this corner. Let's see if he's used. Indeed, does go short to Ali Wahid. Now Picotto on his less favoured right foot, changing the angle, having to deliver in that way. Still, the pressure here though remains on the Palace goal. Quashi, poor pass. Williams there to win it back. So often doesn't he in midfield? Intercepting, winning possession back like that. And then forward here now with Jesse Derry, who goes for goal. Back it breaks to Dashi. That one's blocked then by Insasi. More promising then, though, for Palace on the counter attack. In that transitional moment, the intent was certainly there for them to turn defence into attack quickly. Derry playing with such confidence as well. Didn't turn down the opportunity to shoot, did he? Despite the distance from which he was from goal. <laughs> Throw-ins taken short. Maybe a question of a foul throw there, but the referee was happy with the way in which it was taken. Dashi sets it back to Williams, trying to dictate the play from the middle of the pitch again. Hooked clear by Walters. That'll be a Palace ball. Much there though, on the pass from Samade. Trying again to feed Dean Benemar, who's deputising in that left back role today for Freddie Cowan. Looks as though he's a very similar sort of player in terms of his intent to get forwards down that left wing and join the attack in that way. And taken forwards down the line, but Benemar was first to the ball. Here he is now delivering into the centre, but nobody there. Just needed to get his head up a little more, perhaps, before choosing to cross that time. Look at the intensity and tempo of the press here for Palace going in search of winning the ball back. And Dash has done that. Then goes to ground, but nothing doing for the officials. It's just the goal kick, which is pointed for. It's almost like five seconds of, of fury there, though, wasn't it, for Palace as they went in search of regaining possession. Not the first time that's happened today. It's twice now that Luca Picotto has placed the pass like that. 
directly out of play. Palace with the ball back. Unforced error from the Fulham left back again. Plenty to come for you on Palace TV as well. We'll have live audio commentary of the first team game against Manchester United this evening. 5.30 is the kickoff time for that one. Here goes Benamar into the penalty area. Just not quite on point with the delivery then though into the danger zone. But again, you can see the intent from the left back getting forwards seemingly at every opportunity. Yeah, we'll also have live audio commentary of the first team game against Everton next Saturday. Palace TV, your place to keep up to date with everything Palace. And it was he there under pressure. George King just applying a little bit too much pressure for the referee's liking. It's the free kick which is given to Fuller. Worth mentioning, of course, as well, the first ever WSL game for Palace tomorrow at Brisbane Road. Tickets still available for that one from £5 if you'd like to get down to support the women's team. Ali Wahid looking to dig out a diagonal switch of play which is executed really well to find McCauley Zipa cuts inside onto his left foot and bounces one through took a deflection en route through to goal and Billy Eastwood wasn't going to be able to get there somewhat fortunate there for Palace that that deflection took it from their point of view the right side of the post and out for the corner All came about as a result of the really well executed switch of play there though from Ali Wahid who certainly seems to be a, a danger player that Palace will have to contend with. 21 minutes on the clock, one hand in the air is the signal from this corner towards the near post area and it's against the outside of the post. Hayden Evans just diverting it, goal bound off his chest I think. Always seemed likely from our vantage point that it was going to end up that side of the post and not ripple into the back of the net but still it's a an opportunity isn't it for the visitors and one which they'll be wishing they could have back Judy's is dropping deep into a perhaps more of a, a wing back role than we initially expected goes hand in hand as well with Dean Benamar bombing on down that left flank too so maybe it is more of a a hybrid back three, back four system for Palace in operation here this morning. La Vega. Approaching the midway point of this first half now. Rigian out onto that right flank again. Vazepa gets to the byline, looking to cut it back for Aidan Evans. Derry able to bring the ball up towards halfway and it was a touch off the Fulham man which actually took it closest to Labega. Outnumbered then he was a uh, Benjamin Casey, I beg your pardon, then though outnumbered up front for Palace. Opposite number nine, Bashir Labega hasn't seen much of the ball so far for Fulham. Ali Wahid. Now Ridgian. Neatly done in midfield. Out to McCauley Zipa again. Does well to get to the line across the face of goal and there's the opener. It's towed home on the line by Luca Picotto. And it's Fulham who have themselves a one goal advantage here with 23 minutes on the clock. Such good work, wasn't it, from the French 16-year-old winger Macaulay Zipa, 
who did so well in providing the assist there. And it was the simplest of finishes for Luca Picotto. Forward from left back. And if Palace are to come away from this game with a favourable result, then they're going to have to do it the same way they did it last week, coming from behind. Zipa there, just too hot to handle for Dean Benemar. Jasper Judd did all he could on the goal line to try and slide in and make a last-ditch intervention, but the damage was done really in the moments prior. Macaulay Zipa. Not the scorer of the goal there for Fulham, but certainly the man to whom the credit should go. Creating the opportunity for Picotto to tow home on the line. So 1-0 to Fulham then. And Palace now will have to bounce back. As they have done this season. As they did do last game. Benamar's delivery over Casey's head. It's a good header out of the penalty area then. Not such a good return back in there from George King. Well, that's a blow, isn't it, for Rob Quinn. And I, th I think he would have been pretty pleased with the way in which his team has started the game. The goal, though, has come at a potentially important moment for Fulham. And now the onus on the home team to respond. Goal kick there taken short out to Joe Walters. Sarsi back to Underwood. Nicely drilled forwards there into the chest of Evans. Well won back by King. Palace with the ball again. Three points. The gap separating the two teams ahead of kickoff today. Palace three points ahead of the visitors in that regard it's the gap which Fulham will look to close should they come away from today's game with a favourable result for them Samadi into Williams now the try list on the ball in midfield haven't seen too much of him so far, really. Trialist wearing number six today for Palace. Walker Smith out to Benamar. He's done well in possession, hasn't he, Dean Benamar? But on a couple of occasions now, seems to have, have struggled in a more regular defensive role up against the ever so lively Macaulay Zipa. King with a little bit of a heavy touch. Does find Judd though. Judd surely fouled there by the goal scorer Picotto. Wasn't given. Definitely looked to be a, a deliberate pullback at the shirt of Jasper Judd. Oh, it's a poor clearance. Here's Dashi. Good opportunity for Dashi, but he's not able to take it with the goal gaping. He smacks the floor in frustration because he knows just how good a quality opportunity that one was. A mistake from Marco Underwood in the Fulham goal. Presenting the ball straight to Matteo Dashi. Had the one defender to beat. Lofted it over Logan Cook, but couldn't find the gaping net. It's a big, big chance which goes begging there for the Eagles. Sometimes that's the way to get back into a game, isn't it? Take advantage of a, a mistake like that. It was a gift of a chance. One which he'll be wishing that he could have back. Underwood taking no chances, playing out from the back that time. Sending it directly forwards. Picotto's header only breaks two dashy though. 
Trial is dispossessed in midfield. It's a good sliding challenge there from King to just disrupt any potential progress for Lubega. Again, a hint of a foul throw in there, perhaps for Fulham as it was taken by Picotto, but the referee not answering the Palace protests. Sarsi to his centre-back partner, Logan Cook. That's been a bit of a reshuffle today for Fulham at the back with Joe Walters moving out to right back. No Bradley Slade here today. So Sarsi's dropped into centre-back from that right back role. Back it goes there from the Fulham captain, Jaden Quashi, leader of this team in midfield, and he's pointing to where he thought the goalkeeper should send the ball. Derry, beneficiary of the advantage there, played by the referee as well. Judd, Dashi, tried to play it forwards first time and looked to unlock the Fulham defence. The free kick given there to the visitors. Palace again just caught a little bit too over over eager maybe in their efforts to get the ball back. Long forward there from the right boot of Marco Underwood. Goalkeeper Eastwood's come a long way. It was fortunate really that it took. Such a, a long time to drop back down from the sky and the header was a clearance away in the end from Dean Benamar, but it wasn't particularly convincing from Billy Eastwood in the Palace goal in truth. I think we're going to see the first yellow card of today's game here for disrupting the flow of the attack there. And the referee has the card out of his pocket and shows that the way of the Fulham number eight Seth Rigian becomes the first player cautioned. It was only a couple of games ago here at the Crystal Palace training ground that both teams actually finished the game with 10 men. That one a couple of weeks ago now when Palace drew 1-1 here with Southampton. Oh, loose pass. Dashi sent him the chance to get there. And Rigion, who's just been cautioned. But the free kick's gone the opposite way. And the foul is given there in favour of Fulham. Well, it's a big call, isn't it, from the referee who's cautioned Matteo Dashi for that one. Palace themselves were asking for the free kick to begin with, but it's gone the opposite way. Certainly thought for a, a split second as though there might be a second yellow card in quick succession there coming out for Seth Ridgeon, but referee not seeing it that way. Free kick was in the end given in his favour. Dashi joining Rigian in the referee's notebook. Decent response though from Palace since falling behind. Had the, the opportunity when Underwood was a long way out of goal and Dashi on another day might have made him pay. Other than that, they're yet to really create opportunities to test the Fulham goalkeeper, but they have settled back down in terms of the possession in midfield and Just looking to reassert a, a level of control which was lost when they conceded. Given away there to Judd. Clips it through. It's off the head of Casey. Had to then try and improvise. It's 
corner which the referee's pointing for. So still here, Palace able to apply the pressure on the fallen goal. Benemar looks as though he's going to take this one. Again across from left to right to deliver left footed. Also with the offer of a short corner here with Matteo Dashi in close attendance. Let's see what comes of it. It is taken short to Dashi. Back to Benemar who then delivers deep towards the back post. The header all the way back across but not directed how it was meant. Palace here setting up really high from this Fulham goal kick right on the edge of the 18 yard box. Underwood reluctant it seems to play short and out from the back and indeed does go long in the end up towards La Vega. Palace forcing that from the aforementioned defensive setup high up the field. There's the Fulham danger man Zipa with the ball again though. Good covering defending there from Samade. Get up! Higher! Get up! Higher! 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 Palace throwing. Taken quickly. Maybe just stole a yard or two down the line, but got away with it there. Jesse Derry. Didn't come to anything in the end though. For Palace, and maybe if he had that moment back, he might have just looked to, to reset things and keep possession as we've seen. Previous occasions for Palace. That time looked to get the ball back in play quickly, but it wasn't really the throwing that was required. Picotto, the goal scorer. Checking back with possession and then switching the play again. Out to Zipa. With the offer of the 1v1 against Benamar again. And you can imagine he'll take it. Trying to feed the pass through then. Just cut out and Palace with it back. Good work there from Derry. No. More pragmatic and sensible decision from Jasper Judd to keep possession. Everybody in Fulham colours back behind the ball at the moment. They're a, a well drilled defensive unit. And with the goal to protect now as well, it's a a little bit more difficult task for Palace to break them down. Quashi with the ball in midfield now for Fulham. And again, the intention is to drive out onto that right flank and feed McCauley Zebra at every opportunity. Sarsi back to Logan Cook again. Zipa back to Walters. Then just settling down for a minute or two with Palace now set up in their defensive structure. Forcing the ball all the way back to goalkeeper Underwood. Into the hole there in midfield and Rigion's able to link the play. Big diagonal is won well in the air by King and Walker Smith got to it in the aftermath as well before King's clearance away. Struggling to, to build off Benji Casey as they have done in previous weeks though Palace. Certainly one of the things that they'll be, be looking to do more often is get the ball into the feet of the, the big number nine and then build from there. Hasn't seen much of the ball at all so far really. There's Ali Wahid. Out to Picotto. Goal scorer looking to turn provider there for Fulham. Collected on the edge of the penalty area there by Rigion. Quashi and Cook just getting in each other's way. Still Fulham with the ball though. Switch of play out here to Picotto. 
Judd back doing his defensive duties. And Palace ensure that the ball's forced backwards. It does break forward there, though, to Ali Wahid, though, into the penalty area. This is dangerous now for Palace, and Ali Wahid makes it two. Well, there was certainly a little bit of fortune about the way in which it broke the way of Fahana Ali Wahid, but it's a composed finish in front of goal. And the task in hand now for the Eagles has just become doubly difficult as Palace double their first half advantage. Fahan Ali Wahid adding to the score sheet after Luca Picotto's opener. Here's the replay then, Quashi with the assist. It was just off the toe, wasn't it, of Jesse Derry, and you could see the frustration. Judd couldn't get back there in time. Through the legs of the defender, and I think through the legs of the goalkeeper as well, as he went down low to his left and tried to keep that one out, but for Han Ali Wahid beating him with the effort on goal. 2-0 to Fulham then. And it's not going Palace's way so far. Going to have to do something they, ha they haven't done so far this season if they are to get anything from this game. Coming back from two goals down. And what you would say is that they're always high scoring games. If you look at the results in the previous fixtures. Ten goals on the opening day. Then the 1-1 draw, which I mentioned earlier, when both teams were down to ten men. Palace scored three at Reading and a 4-2 win last time out against Norwich. So Palace usually score goals. And there is still a long way to go in this game. Taken down there by Williams. Chance to maybe get one back straight away. Williams checks back onto his left foot, but always wanted it on his right, and that was clear. You wonder whether maybe he should have just pulled the trigger on his albeit less favoured left foot because the opportunity was there for him to do so. Chance for an immediate response which goes begging there though for Palace. How they could do with getting one back before half time. The penalty area is loaded well here. Fulham majorly zonal in their style of defending. It's one then at the back post before King could get there. And Sarsi it was who got his head to the ball. Palace throwing. It certainly hasn't been one-way traffic for the visitors at all in this first half. Haven't really had too many other opportunities, have they, bar the Two times which they've found the back of the Palace net. Dashi's delivery takes a deflection behind again for another corner. Yeah, so in that sense you'd maybe argue that the scoreline flatters Fulham somewhat, but what you would say is that they've been clinical when the opportunities have come their way. But still, it certainly doesn't feel as though it's a game which Palace are by any means out of. Benamar's in swinging delivery. Put it away well then, though, by Cook. Taken down in the penalty area then by Walker Smith. And thought just for a split second that he might have gone to ground there. Stayed on his feet. Bit the call from the Palace coaching staff down below us there was for the utilisation of a, a, a block in the middle centrally. Something off the training ground maybe from this set piece. It's taken short to Dashi again as we've seen multiple occasions from these corners. The tally of which is really totting up now in this first half as well. Opportunity there to utilise a block though as it wasn't delivered into the penalty area. Samari. Went sliding into the challenge there. George King got to the ball.
90 seconds to play now until the end of the first 45. Plus stoppage time to play at the end of it, of course. But you wouldn't imagine that there'd be too much. Haven't really had any stoppages by the, the two goal celebrations, I suppose, in this first half. Judd to Dashi. In behind the defence as well here, Matteo Dashi cuts it back, but that's cut out then by Rigian. Just not quite happening at the moment for Palace when that final bit of quality is required in the final third. But on the more positive side of the coin, they are getting into those final third areas. They don't seem to be having too much difficulty in getting through the Fulham midfield. All the way through here, there's a chance for Williams. Try to improvise then and get it into a more preferable shooting position. Again, maybe just wonder whether he could have taken the shot a split second earlier. Great run from midfield though, wasn't it? That third man running behind the Fulham defence and it was untracked to begin with. And those two moments for Seb Williams probably the closest really the Palace have come to finding a, a response of course had the, the chance which was gifted to them as well Dashi unable to find the, the gaping net but in terms of what they've created themselves Palace Williams driving through midfield has, has caused Fulham the most problems so far we're into stoppage time now at the end of the first half at the referee's discretion as to how long this one will be allowed to play for. Zipa. Referee's assistant was well placed to make the call there despite the Fulham protests. Palace throwing gets the ball back in play. Williams again in an advanced role, more advanced than we're perhaps used to seeing from him. With the trialist just dropping a little bit deeper in midfield and allowing Williams to push on in that attacking midfield role. The referee blows the half-time whistle. Not to be for Palace in this first half. Fulham with a two-goal advantage at the midway point. Goal. Welcome back then to the Crystal Palace training ground for the second half of this under-18 Premier League match between Palace and Fulham. And it's the visitors who are currently two goals to the good at half-time with goals from Luca Picotto and Fahan Ali Wahid in that first 45. But certainly don't rule Palace out of this one yet. It was a close first half really despite the two goals. And Palace still with it all to play for here in this second half. So we are underway. Palace attacking the goal to the left of the picture as we look at things in this second half. No, I'm sure be hoping for an early second half goal. And that will then mount the pressure on Fulham. That's the plan. Let's see if it goes to plan for the Eagles here in the second period. Palace did score in 30 of the... 32 games last season. This is a foul there on Matteo Dashi and a yellow card. Shown the way of the Fulham number 11 for Han Ali Wahid as well. That's the third yellow card of the game today. So Ali Wahid joining Rigian and Dashi himself in the referee's book. But yeah, Palace scored in all but two of the games last season. You look at the games against Fulham, they scored three, four and five in those three meetings. So certainly the history books on paper would suggest that Palace are far from out of this one. Delivery in there from the left back, Benamar. Judd clips it forwards. No changes. It doesn't look like for either team at half time. Do my best to keep you up to date with all of the substitutions, which I'm sure will happen as the second 45 progresses. Reminder of the Palace substitute bench, substitute goalkeeper Marcus Hill.
Tyrese Adams Coleman, who came on last week and scored. Zach Henry, who's one to look out for making his return from injury. Jerome Asai and Joshua Mawana are the other options in reserve today for Rob Quinn. Handball there is the call from the referee. And I wonder whether we'll again here see Palace look to lead the ball all the way across in search of Jesse Derry. I'm sure one of the things that they'd have mentioned at half-time would have been to, to get both he and Benji Casey on the ball more often. Were both restricted, limited, weren't they, in terms of their involvement and influence on the game in the first half. But here is Derry driving towards goal. Williams. Derry again. Neat, neat control into the penalty area. And it's turned behind then by Logan Cook. Out for another Palace corner, the first of the second half. Didn't really make too much of them in that first 45. We're looking to better test the full-on defence from these set pieces here in the second period. Taken short again to Benemar. Back it goes to Dashi. And he gets the free kick as well, right on the edge of the penalty area. Fulham complaining they felt that there was an offside in there as it was played back to Matteo Dashi but the yellow card there for the foul by Macaulay Zipa. I don't think he can have any complaints about that. Fulham were complaining about a potential offside but it was difficult to see with so many defenders in the penalty area as well exactly where the deepest one of those was. Referee there just indicating exactly where he feels the foul was. A little less close to the penalty area line than perhaps Palace thought it was. Still full and set up with two players in the wall despite the acute angle from which this is going to be delivered. It's almost like a, a narrow corner, isn't it, from the same, the same sort of position. You wonder whether it will just be whipped in there with pace and power. And try to trouble Marco Underwood in goal. Derry waiting on the edge of the penalty area. But it's wasteful, isn't it, really, there from Palace. Not what they'd intended. And you go back to the, the call for a block, perhaps, from the sidelines in the first half. And it was maybe a, a block of a defender that was required there to open up the shooting opportunity for Derry. And a better execution on the pass as well. But the counter-attack is set alight here for Fulham. Leading the charges, Rigion slips it through as well. There's another chance and another Fulham goal. And it's the number nine, Bashil Lubega, who gets his name on the score sheet this time. Five minutes played in the second half and things go from bad to worse here for Palace. It's Fulham who now lead by three goals to nil. And it had been a positive start to the second half as well. But it's just a lightning fast counter attack which has caught Palace out. Caught the Palace defence cold perhaps as well. And sliding in to try and intercept the pass there, Walker Smith. But it found its way through to Lebega who was onside and it was a good finish from the Fulham number nine. Credit where it's due for the visitors they've been. Clinical when the chances have come their way. The first a simple tap in. The second composure shown from Fahan Ali Wahid and composure again there. That time from Bashir Labega. I'm sure much of the, the message at half time as well for Palace would have been look, two goals in the game. We get one back quickly, then who knows? And Fulham. The, the seeds of doubt might have been planted then for them. But well, from a, from a visitor's point of view, I'm sure it's delightful that they now have the, the three goal advantage and it's a healthy looking cushion for them to protect as well. Just hasn't all come together today for Rob Quinn's side as it has done in previous weeks. When 
lunging after that twice there Dean Benamar here's Derry with the chance the rare chance in this game to drive forward at the defenders he gets the corner but nothing more Still, it seems as though Palace will persist with the short corners, at least with the setup in that way, with one man coming short for the dead ball here. Hasn't really worked out of the way in which I'm sure they had hoped for so far, though. Always the option of using, is it, using it as a decoy and with the direct delivery into the penalty area. Let's see. Here's a direct delivery this time into a central area at the edge of the penalty box and the handball there given against Palace. Again, it's a, another corner which ultimately doesn't play out how they'd envisaged. Longer direct from Underwood. Underneath it then though was Samari. Heavy touch, loose one from Williams. Ali Wahid here, feeling Zipa. Zipa's clipped towards the back post. It's a deep delivery and not then kept in play by Luca Picotto. Marde, not with the kindest of passes to him and I think that was the initial error which then forced the misplaced pass from the Palace left-sided centre-back got away with it that time Judd Dashi Derry calling for it Just feeling in control, don't they, at the moment? Palace just need to do something to disrupt that continuous control for the visitors. And you wonder whether Rob Quinn will soon show his hand in terms of a substitution. In fact, I think we're going to see one right now. And indeed, we are going to see the introduction of Jerome Asai for Palace. And is it going to be the trialist coming off? I think it looks that way. Yeah, seems to be the trialist in midfield for Palace who's going to be replaced here. And Jerome Asai is the man to come on then. He'll look to make an impact. Struggled to get into the game, didn't he, really? The Palace trialist in midfield. Seemed as though much of the game was kind of just passing him by. Williams somewhat working overtime in midfield we'll be hoping that Asai can help out in that regard but here yeah, Palace have some more defending to do driving forward to the edge of the penalty area but dragging the shot wide there Ali Wahid so purposeful with the ball at his feet though and it's another example of that declined the offer of a couple of teammates actually either side of him for a potential Ball slip through, but I don't think you can blame him for taking aim from the edge of the penalty area like that. Switch of play there for Palace is cut out. Hasn't had the service today that he has had in previous games, Jesse Derry. I'm sure that will be one of the frustrations for for him and Palace as a team as well. But they haven't been able to utilise his threat as certainly we know they can do. Into the feet of Ali Wahid who's able to turn 
And here's the outlet again for Vullen. Switching the play out to Picotto. Picotto up against Judd. He seems to be dropping deeper and deeper, doesn't he, Jasper Judd, over on that right wing. On the right side, at least. Dropping back to a, a more defensive role now. Haven't really seen the same sort of level of energy that was apparent from the number seven as he came off the substitutes bench last week and scored as well against Norwich. Difficult, of course, isn't it? Different dynamic when you start the game to when you come off the bench as an impact substitute. Walker Smith. Fulham still high up the field despite the 3 0 scoreline with which they'll now defend. Walker Smith again. Evans close to him. Dashi back to Samadi. Williams. Infield, but nobody there in Palace Colours. I mentioned before the game about the unpredictability of the opposition in terms of their results so far this season. And for Fulham, it has very, very much been a, a mixed bag of results, but they've seen an upturn in form in recent weeks. It looks as though they're going to continue that today as well. It would take quite a turnaround if Palace are to come back in this game here's Zipa straight to Samade and Palace better dealing with Macaulay Zipa's threat perhaps in the second half but that's maybe opened up gaps elsewhere on the field offside that time against Evans one where he shouldn't really be offside with the whole line to look right across but just went a little bit too early There's a sign of Derry's frustration as well, and he's dropping that deep and, and roaming free in midfield like that to get on the ball. He's vacated this regular wing role at the moment. There's Benamar who drives into that same space. Benamar towards the byline, all the way to the back post. Helped back across then by the substitute Jerome Asai, and it's behind for the corner. Wouldn't quite break for Casey. Over his head to begin with, and then the touch from Asai was back behind him. But good work from Dean Benemar on the left wing. Benemar's delivery it was. Such an inviting one as well, but the Palace players seemed rooted to the deck. Nobody seemed to jump for it. Maybe just left it for each other in the end. And yeah, certainly one of the better deliveries though, wasn't it, from the Palace set pieces, namely the corners so far. It only takes one moment, of course, to get back into the game, but if that moment doesn't come quickly, then just the, the, the threat isn't there, that this game will just dwindle down to its conclusion, really, and get away from Palace even more so in the final half an hour. A side dispossessed, nothing happening for him in midfield. There's Ali Wahid, slips a good pass through as well here to Evans. Another opportunity for Fulham, clips it over the goalkeeper, but it's a good save in the end from Billy Eastwood, who's equal to it and keeps it out. And keeps the scoreline down to just three. So much space through the centre of the defence there, though, for Ballast. It's a really good stop from the... 
goalkeeper Eastwood. Aidan Evans must have had his eyes light up as he was through on goal. There's so much space to exploit there, but couldn't beat Eastwood that time. And the Palace goalkeeper hasn't actually had to make too many saves, has he, today? Nothing he could do really about the goals either. Certainly the, the first and the third, the second maybe. One which he might look back on, but maybe being a tad harsh with that. It certainly hasn't been a game where the, the goalkeeper keeps the, the team in it and keeps the scoreline down up until that point. You know, you think of a 3-0 game and maybe you'd expect there to have been a whole host of opportunities for the team who were ahead to really rack up the goals, but it hasn't been the case. You go back to that word clinical in front of goal again for Fulham, something which they have been up until that point. Not quite that time. I'm sure they'll be hoping that they can afford to see a chance come and go like that when they're already three goals up. The player down here at the moment for Palace struggling here is Williams, but the game goes on. It's kept in play as well. Zipa, Fulham under no obligation to put the ball out. Zipa continues into the penalty area and Samade with the clearance away. Calls for the referee to stop the game and it will now be put out of play eventually by Fulham and Seth Ridgian. First real break in play then. Didn't see Neither of the medical teams called for in the first half, but the Palace physio is on here to see to the captain. Gives an opportunity for just a, a little bit of a, a reset at this juncture as the players come across to this near side to take some fluids on board. The sun is shining here in South London. Elsewhere in the under-18 Premier League South. Brighton are currently 3-0 up against Leicester. Both of those teams ahead of these two in the league standings before play got underway today. It's an impressive result as well, that for Brighton. If they can hold on to it away from home. Some of the later kickoffs underway now as well. League leaders Aston Villa a 1-0 up at Chelsea. Southampton Spurs still goalless at the moment, so too West Brom and West Ham. 65 minutes on the clock here. And Fulham three goals to the good. They were 2-0 up at half time. Picotto the first scorer, Ali Wahid the second, and Bashir Lebega with the third. Five minutes after the second half restart. We're going to see a substitution here. For Palace now, Zach Henry, the man who I mentioned earlier, is just making his comeback from injury. More than a year out on the sidelines with a long-term injury before making his return to action in the 4-2 win over Norwich last, Norwich last week. And he's on here. Did okay last week, Henry, but uh, as you'd maybe expect for a player coming back from injury after that long on the sidelines, kind of struggled to make too much of an impact in the game. He'll be hoping to make more of an influence as Williams prepares to come back on as well. Try to clear up exactly who has been replaced there for Palace in just a moment for you. Here's Zipa into the penalty area. Onto his favoured left, and there's another Fulham goal. 
And it's that man, Macaulay Zipa, who adds insult to injury really here at the moment now for Palace. He's been so dangerous right from minute one. And now has himself on the score sheet to add to his earlier assist as well. Zipa the latest scorer. And it's Fulham who are four goals ahead. It's not turned out to be the second half response for Palace that they were looking for at the break. Lovely switch of play. That time cutting inside onto his favoured left foot, Macaulay Zipa. And maybe gave the goalkeeper the eyes, sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. His weight was all on his right foot there, Billy Eastwood. And cut back across him and into the back of the net. Benamar again there just struggling to cope with the danger of Macaulay Zipa and the French winger on the score sheet here. his third goal of the season backed himself a brace in the 5-1 win over Norwich earlier this campaign it's actually only the third game in which he's played this season as well Palace will continue fighting right until the very end I'm sure but this one is now well and truly beyond them you have to feel Delivery over the head of the substitute Jerome Asai. And it's collected there comfortably again by Underwood. <laughs> Confirmation as well that Benjamin Casey is the man who's been replaced in that latest switch for Palace with Zach Henry coming on in his place. Didn't really get into the game, did he? As we've seen from him in previous weeks. Benji Casey, you have to give credit, I suppose, to the Fulham defence for the way in which they handled him throughout the game. It's almost those defensive concerns, isn't it, though, that are the biggest problem for Palace. When you think back to the opening day of the season, it looked as though... Those defensive worries had since been put to bed, but not today. Some of the goals that they've conceded have been far too simple from a defensive point of view. Here's Dashi. Still Callis going in search of a, a consolationary goal. All the way through to the back post. Benamar still battling for possession. Gets it now. Back to Williams. King. Clips it in search of Dashi, who then somewhat manhandles the goalkeeper. His frustrations come to the fore again, and he's already been cautioned as well, Matteo Dashi. And things just go from bad to even worse now for Palace. Down to ten men for the challenge on Fulham goalkeeper Marco Underwood. Bit of rush of blood to the head maybe for the Palace number 10 and of course what that's going to bring as well is a suspension so it's not only an issue in terms of today's game because today's game is now beyond them but looking ahead as well to forthcoming fixtures and that will be a one game suspension for Matteo Dashi. Underwood is back to his feet here now the Fulham goalkeeper but they're going to have to see this remaining 20 minutes thereabouts out with 10 men as well now, Palace. And you'd imagine at this point now the message from Rob Quinn is one of damage limitation. OK, it hasn't been our day, far from it. Let's get through now with a, a somewhat respectable scoreline. the second time this season that a Palace player has been sent off in the 
Under 18 Premier League after George King was dismissed against Southampton as well. Also for a, a second bookable offence. It's actually the fifth yellow card. A fifth red card, I should say, I beg your pardon. Fifth red card in the five Palace games across all of the teams that they've been up against as well. So it certainly seems as though when Palace play, the cards come out from the referee. I don't think in truth that Matteo Dashi can have too many complaints about that. So 4-0 to Fulham. And with the man advantage, the Cottages now as well. Ali Wahid. You'd imagine that this will now be a, a regular pattern which we'll see more frequently as the game goes on with Fulham having the lion's share of possession. Zeeper again working his magic, cuts it back to Ali Wahid. His shot then blocked en route through to goal. More defending though for Palace to do and again more problems being caused by the number seven McCauley Zipa. Walters to Zipa again. Thinking back to that game which George King was sent off in against Southampton earlier this season. It didn't actually seem to change the, the course of the game too much. Again, here goes Zipa. Gets the ball into the penalty area, but it yeah, didn't seem to actually change the pattern of play too much. It didn't feel as though Palace were playing with a man less at the time in which they were. I don't think that's going to be the case today. Again, just not happening, is it, for Jesse Derry? Just not happening for Palace. And things which have very much clicked in recent weeks have gone the opposite way today. Here's Henry. Free playing the advantage there. Williams. Out to Derry. Here cuts in onto his right foot. Doubled up on then though. Drills it across the face of goal. And it's probably the closest the Palace have come in the second half there. Derry who's struggled to get into those sorts of positions in the game so far. Did well there as he was up against two Fulham defenders. And Jerome Sight was, who really wasn't far away from making contact in the centre, and any proper contact on that, it surely would have ended up in the back of the net. Back up, be aware of second phase. Second phase, back up. Left footed delivery again. Breaks out here though, and the breakaway might be on now for Ali Wahid. Couple joining him in the attack as well. He has a runner ahead of him and Jaden Quashi. Ali Wahid still going to the penalty area now. Goes to ground and the referee points for a penalty. Travelled such a long way with the ball at his feet there for Han Ali Wahid. Right from the edge of his own penalty area and at the end of it all he wins the spot kick. Well, an opportunity for the Palace goalkeeper, Billy Eastwood, to make a save from the spot. Always difficult, isn't it, for goalkeepers? Always the advantage is with the striker, the penalty taker. We'll see if Eastwood here can come up with the goods on, the day, on a day in which Palace haven't had too many. He goes the wrong way and it's tucked away well by the captain, Jaden Quashi. It's a fifth Fulham goal. And for Palace, it is very much a case of damage limitation as the game goes on. Good penalty, wasn't it, from Jaden Quashi? Maybe gave Eastwood the eyes. He went the wrong way. And Quashi calmly tucking it away for number five. Here's a replay of that. 
drive forwards from Fahan Ali Wahid. He looks a really good player, doesn't he? Into the penalty area and just a bit of a lazy leg left out maybe by Walker Smith who didn't seem to appeal, didn't contest the decision. And I think sometimes the reaction of the players tell you more than the the replay, even if the the angle is a little bit difficult to see from. You can see the reaction of the players. No complaints to the referee as he pointed for the penalty. Oh, heavy touch from the goalkeeper, and he's very fortunate there that the Fulham player slipped. Quashi, I think it was, who, enough for all the world, was going to pick up possession there, but just slipped at the crucial moment. Still 12 minutes left to play here as well. It's going to be attack against defence. Fulham very much adding to their goal difference as well. On a, a negative goal difference going into the game, but it's turned into a, a plus four as things stand. And who knows how important the goal difference factor might actually prove to be at the end of the season. Here's Ali Wahid taking aim again. Curling effort, but that time just didn't quite curl enough for him. Palace haven't got to grips with him today. Really good player. The standout Fulham performer. Will be a corner here as well for Fulham as well. Ruben Khan is going to be coming on. He's on to replace Macaulay Zipa. Another one of the star performers, but I think Ali Wahid probably just edges things in that regard for the Cottagers. There's a substitution here as well for Palace. Is it going to be a double change? I think it is. Dean Benamar has made his way off the field and Seb Williams is now doing likewise. Ruben Kahn having come on there for Fulham. Kyrie Reese Adams Coleman, one of those to make his introduction to the game for Paris. And the other man coming on here is Joshua Mawana. So that's all four outfield options from the substitute bench now brought on by Rob Quinn. Corner delivery then for Fulham. Towards the near post, bounces all the way through. Header didn't clear the penalty area, but the clearance then from Derry certainly does. Still 10 minutes to play in this one, of course, but in terms of looking ahead for Palace. Next up, well, they've got a difficult game away at Aston Villa, top of the league. So things certainly don't get easier for Palace, but what it is is an excellent opportunity to maybe play with a little bit of the pressure off and respond. I don't think there will be too many long-term concerns for Palace as well. When you look at the, the season as a whole so far, I mentioned before the game that this was an opportunity to win four on the bounce in all competitions. OK, it's very much gone south today for them, but in terms of long-term concerns... Of course, there's things to fine-tune, but I don't think there's too many of them in that regard. Into the penalty area again, Fulham, Ali Wahid. Clipped all the way across as well. Evans is there with the header. Was he offside? No, says the linesman. Straight at the goalkeeper anyway. Here's a replay again, as you see, of course, Palace playing with the... Man less, but so much room there for Aidan Evans at the back post. Okay. 
terms of those next fixtures, as for Fulham, they'll host West Bromwich Albion next Saturday. West Brom, who have struggled so far this season with just the one point prior to today. So I'm sure the visitors here will be looking to build off what was really an unexpected win here today, isn't it? I think Palace were the favourites going into the game. Full of, of course, in good form ahead of the game, but Palace very much the favourites going into it. Fulham now with the opportunity to build from this victory here today with that game next week. Still plenty more to bring to you in the coming days and weeks, of course, as well on Palace TV. Hopefully with more success for the Eagles than we've seen here this morning. Later this evening, the big one for the first team against Manchester United, 5.30, the kickoff time. Live audio commentary for you on Palace TV for that one. Also be able to bring you Oliver Glasner's pre-Everton press conference on Friday the 27th from around 1.30 as well. And then we'll have live audio commentary of that first team game against Everton next Saturday to bring to you too. So plenty upcoming. Make, make sure you stay tuned on Palace TV to keep up to date with everything that's ahead for you. mentioned earlier but worth reiterating as well that it's the first ever WSL game tomorrow for Palace Women's Team 2. Brisbane Road is the venue, 2pm is the kickoff time. Tickets available from just a fiver. Do get down if you can to support the women's team in their first ever WSL fixture. It's a game of cat and mouse here at the moment isn't it as Fulham are just so happy to keep possession and run the clock down and Palace are so tired at this stage as well with a man less. Fulham trying to draw the press there from the Palace front line. If it's not forthcoming, then Fulham might just keep the ball. In terms of the Palace Academy as well, who with their under-21s team drew 1-1 here last night. Well, Palace under-21s will play Gillingham on Tuesday at 7pm, that's Gillingham's first team in the EFL Trophy. That game being played at Priestfield. The tickets for that one available for even less, just a pound. You can get your tickets to support the Palace under-21s team. Mentioned earlier that this game might just dwindle down to a conclusion and it certainly seems that way with the final five minutes still to be played here. Derry. Touch there from Ruben Khan. Throwing his for Palace. Another break in play and another substitution. Here then for Fulham as well. I think it's Aidan Evans coming off. And indeed to be replaced by Harley Platel. So Platel afforded an opportunity and that's the, the beauty of the situation, isn't it really, for Fulham manager Ali Malou. Five goals to the good and able to give chances off the substitute's bench to lesser used younger players maybe. Yeah, I mentioned Palace's under-21 team who drew here 1-1 last night with Reading. Both of those goals coming in the first half. Jemaya Amolu on the score sheet for Palace. 
currently mid-table, 12th in the Premier League 2 table. That's where you have to finish in the, the top 16, isn't it, to qualify for the playoffs at the end of the season. So much you can keep up to date with across the whole of the club here at Palace. At CPFC Academy is the account on X as well. You can keep up to date with so many of the games on Palace TV and other academy news elsewhere as well. Here's Logan Cook. Now Platel, who seems to be occupying a wide right-back role. Off the bench then for Fulham. In terms of what's gone wrong today then for Palace, I think the, the biggest concerns, as I say, will be defensively. OK, they haven't been able to score. And with 10 men, the, the game's completely finished at this stage. But even up until the point at which the dismissal of, of Matteo Dashi was was made by the referee. I think the biggest concerns for Palace are defensively. Playing okay, weren't they, in the first half? It certainly didn't feel as though really it was a, a one-sided game. I said at half-time that Palace were far from out of it. They were at that stage. It's gone against them in the second half, but as I say, because of those defensive vulnerabilities which have come to the fore again as they did on the opening day of the season. Not scoring is one thing, you can create opportunities and maybe on another day things might have gone their way when you think of the chance that Matteo Dashi had to equalise as well, had that one found the back of the net, then, then who knows from 1-1 one, one onwards. But it's the defensive lack of discipline, is that the right way to put it? Just seems to have been too many spaces left free in the Palace defence. On too many an occasion, too many times today. It's almost turned out to be a bit like an end of season game here at the moment, hasn't it? With Fulham just keeping possession. Those final day of the season games when you know that you have the job done. It's a, a much slower pace to the game in the closing stages, and we'll see if the referee. Ant any time on at the end of the 90 as well. Both teams seem to just be waiting for the final whistle, really. Back again to Marco Underwood, who hasn't had too many saves to make in the Fulham goal. Saved one from Derry in the first half, which bounced through to him, of course, made the error himself to gift the chance to Matteo Dashi for the best Palace opportunity of the game. But it certainly hasn't been tested too frequently as the game's gone on. Neat pass here to find Harley Platel. He drives again towards the Palace goal, finding fellow substitute, and it's into him again from Ruben Kahn, and Platel provides the finish. And it's the sixth Fulham goal in stoppage time. Really well worked from the visitors. Platel taking his opportunity to drive forwards again at the Palace defence. Lovely assist from Ruben Kahn, and it's a really neat finish as well from Patel. Pleasing moment, isn't it, for the Fulham substitutes? Both of those on off the bench and making an impact. Very difficult for Palace playing with the... Ten men as well with the one man less. It's always hard for any team at any level. Yes, 
And it's another example of Fulham being clinical in front of goal. Really? They've had seven chances today, Fulham, and scored six of them. Just the, the one notable save from Billy Eastwood, one-on-one -on -one to deny Aidan Evans. And other than that, they've very much taken their chances when they've come their way, Fulham. They might have another one here as well. It's Ali Waleed. And a shooting chance from the edge of the penalty area after Ali Waheed set that across for Alfie White. And that time rising high up over Eastwood's crossbar. Yeah, that's six goals for Fulham today then, of course, but six different scorers might have gone under the radar. Picotto, Ali Waheed, Lubega, Zipa, Quashi. And now Harley Platel as well. Very much sharing the goals around. You probably aren't going to see too many games in the under-18 Premier League this season or, or, or any game at any level, in fairness, where one team has six different scorers. Referee checks his watch and blows the full-time whistle and brings to an end what has been a very disappointing game this morning from a Palace point of view. But for Fulham, well, it was a delightful one. Six goals. They were 2 nil up at half-time. Added four more in the second half. And at stages, it was one-way traffic. Palace had to play the final 20 or so minutes with a man less as well after Matteo Dashi was dismissed for a second bookable offence. Just wasn't to be today for Palace. Didn't get into their free-flowing rhythm as we've previously seen in games so far this season. It finishes here at the Crystal Palace training ground, very much in favour of the visitors. The full-time score is Crystal Palace nil, Fulham 6.